because absolutely incredible information coming out yesterday regarding if we go to war. Shocking. I was blown away. I had no idea. So I saw that trending right now is searching for the U.S. draft. Uh, and they're saying, like, we're going to have to send Gen Z to war. And Gen Z has been searching the draft right now. Well, we got Congress and a ton of people saying, no, there will not be a draft. Don't worry about it. We're not bringing it. The draft was 50 years ago. Well, an article from The Hill came out yesterday that blew my mind. And it said they're saying that there is not need for a draft because we're not at war. But if we go to war, they said what's shocking is that when we had the draft, the last time we had the draft was 50 years ago. Guess how many people were enrolled in the armed forces all across the board? 750,000, I think it was, or it might have been 700,000. Guess how many are enrolled right now? 76,000. One tenth of our armed forces than what we had 50 years ago. And they're saying that if we went to war the last time we needed it 50 years ago, we had 10 times the amount of people enrolled in our armed forces. Right now, they're saying if we do war, and we're also sending funding out to other countries and our other our supplies out. They're saying that we are ill prepared, and they're saying that um, uh, there was a uh, AI thing that came out with Biden declaring that we were going to bring back the draft. They said it's fake. Biden doesn't have the power for executive order to do a draft. They're saying Congress has to issue it, and they're saying Congress is not talking about that right now. Well, it's because we're not at war right now. But they said if a declaration of war comes out, we are not prepared. And they said that the probability of Congress needing to issue some sort of reinforcement to provide the armed troops necessary could be very, very likely. And I was blown away because I thought, no way. But they're saying they could reinstitute that and it could come back 50 years later. And they said that they will call upon Gen Z. Now, just to clarify, if you're wondering, like, am I going to get drafted for war? The draft that takes place is for the ages 18 to 25. So if you're in that age range, that is who they're going to call upon to go out um, to be dispatched. Uh, and that is Gen Z right now. Um, so that is, I was, I was shocked. Again, after this, after this video, if you want to go see it, it's on my page, Steve Ram, go on the Steve Ram YouTube channel. And it's the very last video. I uploaded it 22 hours ago. And it is that they're saying we have a military crisis, a shortfall right now, and a U.S. draft is actually needed. Um, so man, let me know your thoughts, you guys. Now, in addition to that, like I said, I've been following this story for you for the past week or so that the FBI coming out and warning about potential attacks here on U.S. soil, and then they just released. All right, Shalom. I would like to open up by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone who rule well and preach this truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hope we elect. And today's lesson will be entitled, In the Wars, Their Bridegroom Shall Be Destroyed. And also, the title comes from the inspiration of uh, Second Nezers, the 16th chapter. And that pretty much what's been going on around the world, you know, concerning the world news lately is, you know, uh, 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 um, threats from Hamas uh, or Hamas threatening attacks on a, a U.S. soil. And pretty much, you know, what you've seen in this video, which uh, this guy, he goes by the name of uh, Steve Ram. Um, I, I pulled this off of TikTok. The, the intro clip was about two minutes, almost three minutes long. Uh, this was a, a I, I kind of shortened this a little bit because I wanted to get the point. Um, but, um, Lord's well, I can put the link to the, um, entire TikTok in the, uh, in the description box of Lord's will. But nonetheless, uh, this guy, he goes by the name of, uh, Steve Rim. He's, uh, one of those whistleblowers, preppers, whatever you want to call it. But pretty much what was going on, what was going on where he was explaining was that, uh, pretty much, uh, he was pretty much explaining you know, that there's, there, there's going to be, you know, pretty much a U.S. draft. And ultimately said what that they will pull um so like it, that they will pull Gen Z, all right, and uh for a war, if a war were to happen, which ultimately we understand through the scriptures that war is inevitable. You see the scriptures speak upon what Armageddon, which we know Armageddon is World War Three, which Armageddon in the Hebrew that's Harmagadwan, meaning a mountain or hill of troops. Okay, but ultimately we understand that 
<clears throat> at the end of the day, that a war is inevitable. World War Three is going to come to pass. Thus saith Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. Okay, and also we understand with World War Three coming to pass because we quote it, and also in the Lord's will, we get this precept A, like uh, the title says, all right, which is inspired by Second Nezer, the 16th chapter. It says, What that in the wars their bridegroom shall be destroyed. You see, so also in these days, man. The closer we get to war, man, a draft is inevitable. And also at the end of the day, man, these these uh individuals of today are going to be drafted in World War Three. Okay. Uh let's start out with um a classic, of course. As always, in the book of Matthew, chapter twenty four. And uh verse six, and these are words in the red letters, so these are the words of our Lord Yahweh Shai. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So ultimately, hey, what was going on in this chapter is pretty much you know, the disciples of our Lord Yahweh Shai were asking him about the signs of his return. And pretty much you know, Yahweh Shai, he's going through it, he's breaking it down, all right, telling his disciples of what would unfold in the last days before he returns. All right, and among those signs that our Lord Yahweh Shai spoke of was what? Wars and rumors of wars, and that's what we're seeing, man. Okay, threats <clears throat> of attacks on U.S. soil by Hamas. Okay, uh, it's been numerous threats, all right, in the past from Russia about waging nuclear war in the West over here in America, so on and so forth. Okay, these are all rumors of wars. And also, at the end of the day, what we're waiting for is the wars to actually unfold because we understand that when the war, the, the, the final major war, Armageddon or World War Three, we understand when, when that unfolds, hey, we understand that the kingdom, all right, is right around the corner, all right, right after World War Three. But also, we understand before World War Three pops off, what what major prophecy has to come to pass, man? The MOTB that Mark spoken of in Revelation the thirteenth chapter. So also, there are various different prophecies that have to be fulfilled. Okay, before our Lord Yahweh Shai cracks them clouds. You see, and also the ultimate prophecy we're waiting for, all right, besides the mandatory implementation of the uh, MOTB in World War Three, is the prophecy of Matthew. Well, we in a chapter. Um, let's uh, let's finish this off real quick. Matthew twenty four and six again, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So when we hear these rumors of wars, hey, we we understand, you know, that it's only going to get worse, man. Hey, there, this this little thing going on between Israel and Hamas right now is nothing compared, all right, to 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 what's going to happen, all right, in World War Three, to what's going to happen in Armageddon. See, because we understand with the Third World War that America is going to be completely destroyed, man. OK, and like I said, that ultimate prophecy that us as the hopefully left are waiting on, um, besides, you know, the mandatory implementation of the MOTB in World War Three, because the mandatory implementation of the MOTB and this uh, and World War Three is going to lead to this ultimate prophecy that we're waiting for. All right. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, it says, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man, which is our Lord Yahweh Shai, coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And what are those clouds? Pursuant to the book of Psalms. <coughs> Salakia. Uh, Psalms chapter 104, verse 3. It says, Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the winds. The ultimate uh, chariots, all right. Are likened, okay, or the clouds are metaphors, okay, for for the chariots that Yahweh bash me outside, okay. Now going back to Matthew the twenty fourth chapter, and uh, verse thirty one, it says, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And this is ultimately what we're waiting for: the great deliverance. That Yahweh Bashmi Ashai is bringing it to his elect, which Lord will I hope to be at that number, man. Okay. Hey, we understand as our Lord Yahweh Shai spoke of, all right, a fourth time, those scriptures say uh, in Romans 15 and 4, the things written the fourth time are written for our learning, 
that we through the scriptures might have comfort and hope, roughly paraphrasing, we understand that ultimately the things that our Lord Yahweh Shai spoke of before time are which are unfolding now as we speak. Ultimately, the things that our Lord spoke of before time will lead unto the very, very end of his wicked kingdom and ultimately his return, man. You see, and that's what we're wait waiting for. Okay, for the Lord to come back, all right, take us out of this wicked kingdom and save us, man. Okay. Um Let's grab this in the book of um uh Isaiah chapter nine and verse five. It says, For every battle of the warriors with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, right? Because you know, in the ancient days, the wars, you know, that were fought, you know, were close quarters combat, you know, you had spears, swords, shields, and helmets, so on and so forth, man. Okay. You know, uh, people, you know, individuals, you know, battle or war cries, you know, beating each other on the head, so on and so forth. Okay, it says, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. And ultimately, this, all right, is going to what? World War Three, which ultimately going to be fought by way of those nukes, man, those ICBM missiles, man. You know, and once again, also, we understand that the, the young men in this generation, guess what? They're going to be drafted in the war, man. They're going to be pulled into this very war when America goes to war. OK, and guess what? In these wars, they're going to die, man. All right. Thus say Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. OK, according to prophecy. All right. Um, Let's see. Uh, that's it in the Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, let's get that second Ezra chapter 16 right now. It says, uh, second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 33, it says the virgin shall mourn having no bridegrooms. The woman shall mourn having no husbands. Their daughter shall mourn having no helpers. And here's the point in verse 34. It says in the wars, their bridegroom shall be destroyed and their husbands shall perish of famine so point being what the end of war is that their bridegroom shall be destroyed so when these young men like like the guy was saying in a clip you know gen z they're searching for uh, uh men young men ages 18 through 25 okay when they get pulled into that war man hey, a lot of them are going to die you see because ultimately we understand that the ultimate war all right when america goes to war it's going to be world war three you know even you know america and supporting uh, 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 Israel, all right, in this battle against Hamas and whatnot, we ultimately understand that the ultimate war or that America is going to be involved in is what? Armageddon or World War Three. So when a lot of individuals are of this country get pulled into this world war, they're going to die. You know, especially seeing that, according to prophecy, America is going to be completely destroyed, man. Okay, and we understand, according to Isaiah, the 34th chapter, that the Lord is gathering all right, these armies, man. And Lord's will we get that. I don't want to butcher the scripture, but guess what? All right, we just read according to prophecy that what then when these young men all right go into these wars, all right, into the war, guess what? They're going to die. You see? So like like the guy was going through it, you know, concerning Gen Z. Cause um even even uh later in this clip, um this might be far this might be uh I might have not included that portion uh, in this clip, but um, as he was further explaining it, he was uh, going into the statistics of a uh, Gen Z that um, the requirement in high school, I believe, is some something along this effect. You know, the requirement for f the fitness requirement was uh, to be able to do seventeen push-ups, and, and what he was saying, you know, uh, uh, concerning the research, was that a lot of Gen Z is not able to do that. So point blank. Point being, man, you know, America is fucked. You see, America is fucked because America, there, America's military is not, you know, as, uh, uh, um, uh, what's the, we we'll use the term solid for now. America's military is not as solid, okay, as, uh, uh, the militaries of these other countries, man. You see, you got Russia training their military in the cold. I seen a clip. Um, the other day, I don't know if it was Twitter or TikTok, but you had this man in Russia, all right, pretty much training, you know, his his children to adapt to, you know, that cold weather by, you know, having them, you know, in their undies and, you know, dipping them in, you know, ice cold water. But point I'm trying to make is, hey, America's not doing that shit, man. 
And they, they, they I think, I think they start uh, their men in China off young too. Point being, a hey, America, America is not, is not doing, is not on a level as these other nations, man. America, you know, trannies, you know, women, and and and, and uh, uh, the alphabet community in today's military, man. So once again, a hey, point being, man, point point being is America is fucked in this war. And America is going to be completely destroyed, man. Thus said the scriptures. Okay. Um. So uh, that's it in the second. That's just the sixteenth chapter. Um. <clears throat> this is uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter thirty-four, and verse one. It says, "Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, ye people." Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He had utterly destroyed them. He had delivered them to the slaughter. So also what the Lord, Yahweh, Bashmi, is getting ready to do is deliver these various different nations are in these various different militaries to the slaughter, man. Or what's going to happen during when? During World War Three. Verse 3, it says, Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll, which also has going to that nuclear mushroom cloud. It says, And all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. So also when this when this war pops off, man, when World War Three is full blown scale, man, hey, a lot of a lot of individuals, man, are going to die to these nukes, man. Okay, also we understand that ultimately how about me outside is in control of these nukes, man. Hey, scriptures say, I believe it's a uh, second edge the sixteen chapter as well. Uh, uh, Strong is a right hand that bendeth the bow. Roughly paraphrasing, but at the end of the day, the Lord how about me outside is going to be in control of these nukes, man. Okay, but ultimately. Hey, once the Lord are right, bringing the destruction, hey, let's read verse 3 again. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stinks shall be, excuse me, it says, and their stinks shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. So it's going to be a lot of blood and a lot of death in that day, man, when the Lord brings this destruction. Verse 5, now who is the main target of the Lord's destruction? Well, we're going to read it. Verse 5, it says, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven, behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. So ultimately, Yahweh Bashmi Ashai's main target, okay, is Esau Edom, or the so-called white race, the so-called white nation, which ultimately Idumia is the Greek way of saying Edom. But we understand that the other nations are also are right, going to be caught up in this nuclear destruction, that the Lord is going to deliver up these other nations in the nuclear destruction. Because when we grab this. And the book of uh, Zechariah chapter 14 and uh, verse 12, it says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Because ultimately, hey, Esau, Edom, so-called white nation, okay, they're not the only ones responsible right, for afflicting the children of Israel. All nations have had a, a hand in afflicting the children of Israel, man. Hey, Zechariah, the first chapter tells you that, all right? And ultimately, if you want to get a list of the heathens, all right, you go to Psalms, the 83rd chapter. Okay, you got you got Edom, which is so-called white nation. You got the Hamites in there. Okay, you got uh, Ammon, which are the so-called Japanese. You got Moab, which is so-called Chinese, so on and so forth. All these nations have had a hand in the affliction of the children of Israel. Okay, and also the Lord is going to bring judgment upon all nations, beginning with Edom. It says, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And ultimately, what, what, what's going to cause that? What's going to be the uh, the, the uh, uh, vessel that Yahweh Bashmi Ashai uses to cause that? Those ICBM nukes, man. Okay, that, that, that's what's going to, you know, uh, cause, you know, individuals' eyes to consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth, man. Because ultimately, the ICBM missiles are going to cause that. Scriptures speak upon in Malachi 4 and 1 that the day coming that shall burn as an oven. All right. And what's going to cause that heat? Once again, those ICBM missiles. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, Salakia. 
we was in uh, Isaiah, the 34th chapter. So going back to Isaiah, chapter 34, and uh, verse 6. <clears throat> It says the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. So the Lord is bringing slaughter to America. And also that's what this Basra is talking about. Because when you go into Basra, Basra, excuse me, Basra, was a capital city in the ancient land of Edom. And also, what is, what is Edom's capital city today? America. Okay? So, also, this right here perfectly lines up with Isaiah the 63rd chapter, where it says, Who is this that came, coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Which, also, that's a prophecy, uh, 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 end time prophecy at that, our, of our Lord Yahweh Shai coming back to a world ruled by Edom. And we understand when Yahweh Shai comes back, when the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, sends his son, our Lord Yahweh Shai, back, okay? What is Yahweh Shai going to do? Save his elect, all right? And ultimately, destroy America, okay? And ultimately, the land of Israel is going to be destroyed too, okay? But ultimately, that's the difference between the land of America and the land of Israel is that the land of Israel will be built back up, whereas the land of America is going to be destroyed forever, man. It will not be built back up. <laughs> Okay, that's um, that's it in uh, Isaiah the uh, thirty fourth chapter. Let's grab this in um <clears throat> the book of Zephaniah chapter three and verse eight. And ultimately, hey, we waiting for Yahweh Bashmi Ashai to bring destruction. All right, because once again, we understand when the Lord brings the destruction, that means us as a nation, Lord, we will be of the elect, man. All right, we we know that this means that what this is when the elect goes home. All right, when World War Three, all right, happens because also while World War Three is happening simultaneously, our Lord Yahweh Shai is going to be our Lord Yahweh Shai with the angels going to be saving his elect, all right, and rendering death and destruction. All right, but this is uh, Zephaniah chapter three and eight. Therefore, wait ye upon me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations. That I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. And this lines up with what we just read in Isaiah the 34th chapter, where it says that the Lord had delivered all their armies to the slaughter. See, because ultimately, when the Lord, all right, all right uh, gathers these nations together, guess what? He's going to pour upon them his indignation, as we just read, okay, <clears throat> here in Zephaniah 3 and 8, which the indignation of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Hashai is going to come through what? Those nuclear missiles. Right, and also, we can't forget about the concentrated fire laser beams that are going to be coming out from the chariots, man. That our Lord Yahweh Shai and the angels are going to be riding in, man. You see, so all that, man, is what's going to uh, bring forth the destruction of this wicked kingdom. Okay? <clears throat> um, That's it in the Zephaniah, the third chapter. Um, It was another precept. I was just thinking about it. Um, oh, bracket that Yahweh by Shmi Ashai. It came back. Uh, this is the book of uh, Joel, <clears throat> chapter 3, and verse 9. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. And these are talking about the natural Gentiles, the heathen nations. It says, Prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, and let them come up. See, so ultimately, hey, we in a time of war. Now, all these various different rumors of wars, these war threats, so on and so forth. Forth, okay, that's that's only going to continue to build up and grow worse. And then before you know it, we're actually going to be in war. <laughs> Verse ten, it says, "Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears." And ultimately, at the end of the day, once again, we in a time of war, so it's not going to be any time for agriculture or any time for farming. Why? Because once again, we're coming into that time of war. It says, um, <clears throat> let the weak say I am strong. And reason being is because what all these nations are ga are gaining access to nuclear capabilities. So uh, at the end, all right, in the grand scheme of things, that what that levels a playing field between these nations. Verse 11, it says, assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about thither. Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Who are the Lord's mighty ones? The angels. And ultimately, hey, this this goes into uh what, uh what's that? Uh, Revelation twelve and seven. Okay, where it says uh 
Satan and his angels fought against Michael and his angels, which ultimately that's going to, you know, uh, Esau and his military are fighting against Yahweh Shai, okay, Michael and the angels, which ultimately, hey, 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 we understand that they're miserably going to lose, man. All right, Esau and his armies are, they're miserably going to lose a second. There's the 13th chapter speaks upon how they were afraid and yet there's fights. So these nations, all right, are ultimately going to turn to fight against our Lord Yahweh Shai, Michael and the rest of the angels. But also, we understand that they're going to miserably lose. It says, um, Joel chapter 3, verse 12. It says, Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which also means in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shapat, meaning what? Yahweh's judgment or Yahweh's decision, which also this is located right, in, uh, near the Persian Gulf. It says, For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And once again, Yahweh Bashim Yashai is getting ready to deliver. Are the armies of these various different nations to the slaughter, beginning with Edom. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson. I pray that, that this lesson was edifying to the body and that you guys have not of this. And I'd like to close out by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who were well and preach the truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hopefully elect. And Lord, we'll see you in the next lesson. Till then.